and deliverance. Let's praise God for deliverance. How many of you are dealing with some things in your body and you could you believe in God for your healing? Praise God. All right, well, we're going, you're going to get your healing and deliverance tonight. Let's go to 1 John 4, 5 and 14. 1 John 5 and 14. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Now, this is kind of like that Bible math that I've talked about. Here's, here's, the, here's the algebraic uh, equation. If we approach God and ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. So we know, how many of you know, healing is God's will? Amen. Amen. Deliverance is God's will. Your needs to be met is God's will. For you to live in peace, would you agree that that's God's will? So if you ask anything like that according to his will, then the scripture says that he hears you. And that's more than half the battle because if, you, if he hears you and it's his will, guess what? You get whatever you ask for. Amen? Amen? So we're no different. If someone comes to us and asks us something that we want to do, right, and we have the ability to do it, what is more than likely going to happen? We'll do it. God is no different. So we have to, as the church, we have to get out of the, the habit of thinking that only the pastor can pray for me in order for me to get my healing. And we got to begin to walk in the lifestyle of faith. And I'm not, and then I'm not talking about coming up and getting hands laid because when you come up and get hands laid, it's just us agreeing with you. You're already having the faith and we're just touching and agreeing with you. Amen. But we have to get to a point in our life that we practice having confidence in God and his word. Amen. So we have got to get to the point where we live by faith. And we need to get to a point where we live by faith and our faith is accurate. Does anybody know what I mean by accurate? It's not roll the dice. It's not I hope this happens this time. It's like I know it's going to happen. What are the chances if you went to the major to a major grocery store tonight, what are the chances that you could find a loaf of bread? Pretty, pretty good, huh? Pretty good. About 100%. Well, that's the way your faith has got to be. You got to know that if you need anything from God, that the chances are good. 100% that you're going to get it. You got to know. We got to improve our lives have got to be we can't settle for raggedy lives come on we can't settle for raggedy that means wondering if we're going to have enough to pay the bills wondering if you know and then if something attacks our body it take a whole month for it to go away some six months a whole year two years at some point we need to be a body of believers that we walk in power. Amen. Amen. We need to walk in so much power that our family and friends are impressed. We need to walk in so much power that they follow you to church. Sometimes our lives are so weak, they're not interested in following us anywhere. And so when you walk in power, and you lay hands on them and they deliver, they're going to follow you and say, where are you going? Amen? So we got to be that kind of body. Uh, you got to know that you are a target. Um, you're a Christian. 
You're sitting under the word, and Satan is going to come try that word. And what he wants to do is steal your confidence. He wants to steal your confidence, so you pray, and then if you don't see something happen, or you suffer the symptoms for a long time. And then what he does with that is he does that to destroy your confidence. And so he whispers to you, Dr. Cedric and I'm teaching all that stuff. That stuff don't work. He tells you it doesn't work because it didn't work for you. But the devil is a liar. He's the father of lies. And what we all have to know is we're growing in faith. And you got a master faith. How many of you are good at algebra? Not a whole lot of hands. I know I'm not. By faith, I am. But the truth is, if somebody sat an algebra question in front of me, um, well, I'd have to call my daughter and ask her to sit down and tutor me. I might get on YouTube and see if there's some math wizards on there or something. But I would have to apply myself in order to answer the question. But we think with faith, we're just supposed to say it and it happened. You understand what I'm saying? And saying it is part of it. But saying it, we got to have a belief in our heart. So my point is that you got to apply yourself to the word. And so we're shocked when we don't apply ourselves to the word, when the word is not planted in your heart, it's only planted in your head. So you can come and hear the word and it's only in your head. And you come to church, maybe, you know, some of y'all faithful and you come every week. And then some of y'all come like twice a month. It's like going to math class twice a month. And then take the algebra test. And wonder why you didn't get an A. So we got to now apply ourselves. Now, there are so many definitions of faith out there. I'm going to give you a new one. It's real simple. Faith is confidence in God's word. Okay? Real simple. It's confidence in his word. Whatever he says is true, it's going to happen. How many of you know people to keep their word? Don't you just love them? People you can rely on. I thank God for Dr. C. He's a man. Now, we know all human beings, we, we are, are not perfect, and we within our ability. But if it's within his ability, if he says he's going to do something, he normally keeps his word. In other words, if he tells me <coughs> he's going to come pick me up at a certain time, I can count on it. Y'all got it? It's good to have somebody you can count on, right? How many of you know some people you can't count on? You can't believe nothing they say. Don't believe it. They tell you they're going to be there at 10, they're going to be there at 11. Matter of fact, if you want them to be there on time, you tell them a fake time. You know them people. If you want them to be on time for dinner, dinner's at 4, you tell them 3, maybe even 2.30. And they're going to arrive just on time. So God is a God who keeps his word. Amen. He watches over his word to perform it. He's not a man that he should lie. God ain't going to lie. And so if he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. But we have got to learn how to trust in God's word so we become perfected so that when it's time to pray, we ain't guessing. You can tell them, you can tell your family, no, this is going to happen. You have that kind of confidence. You ain't scared. You're not worrying. You're not wringing your hands. So we're going to deal, tonight I'm going to deal a little bit with the barriers to the confidence in God's word. The number one barrier <laughs> to confidence in God's word are our senses. What you see, hear, taste, touch. The devil says, look at this. It's not the same as God's word. And you got to overcome that 
and believe his word over what you see. And we've been raised to believe what we see. And the truth is, you got to be so into the spirit, meditating on the word so much that you do see, but you see in the spirit, not in your senses. Look at your neighbor and say, see in the spirit, not in your senses. You actually have two sets of eyes. Your physical eyes and you have some spiritual eyes. So you see with your physical eyes and through your spiritual eyes. And so we got to overcome the senses. When God's promise is that you were healed. And I'm going to tell you, when they beat Jesus on the back, it hurt. When they stripped his back, it hurt. So he suffered that pain. So you could have the right to say, I'm not taking no more pain. I'm not taking any more pain. Devil, you're a liar. Don't even think about it. So when you get up and you feel that little thing and you need, oh, no, you don't. Don't even think about it. When you get up and you turn the wrong way, you go, ah. You say, oh, you a liar. Don't even what? Think about it. That's when you know who you are and you ain't going off of feelings. Stop him in his tracks. That'd be just like you sitting on your porch and you see, you look around the house and you see this guy get ready to raise your window up. And you turn around and say, don't even what? Think about it. Are you going to turn your head around and ignore him and let him go on in the window? No, you ain't. So why when you feel something in your nose or in your throat that tickle or in your ear, you'll be like, oh, it's coming. That's just like letting the man in the window. Why you let the man in the window? What should you have told him? Don't even think about it. I, 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 no, 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 not in the ear, not in the throat, uh -uh, no, in the nose. And then he's like a shady lawyer ambulance chaser. He said, he, he uses the symptom as proof. You got this because you know you feel this. You know you got this, this, this. You know you got this flu. You know you got allergies. You know you feel this. And he's, he's presenting his evidence. But faith is an evidence. It's the evidence of things what? <laughs> Not seen. We got some evidence. Don't believe his evidence. He's a liar. He's, he's framing you. He's framing you. He's trying to make you think you're sick. It's a conspiracy. To make you think you don't have, you cannot have confidence in his word. So stop relying on your senses. When you feel pain or discomfort. Or when you see a storm brewing. Don't say, oh, here we go now. Uh-uh, no, we don't. Uh-uh, that's not my response. The disciples told Jesus, they saw the th storm, and they was like, oh, here we go. We're going to die. They said it. I'm surprised they didn't die because they said it out of their mouth. If Jesus hadn't been in the boat, they would have died because they said it with their mouth. That's, that's why he said, why is it you don't have any faith? He saved them from their own words. If he hadn't been there, they would have died. So we ain't going through the storm. Come on. <laughs> You're not going through the storm. I'm going through a storm. No you, no, you ain't going through the storm. The storm better go. Stop right now. I speak to the storm. Command you to be quiet. Stop right now. Your faith has got to be like that. So our senses and then experiences. 
Another barrier to faith is experiences. Your whole family was broke. Generational brokenness. Y'all grew up in the projects. And, and your mama was broke, your daddy was broke, they was always trying to get some money, and now you broke. And you think that's it, we just broke. But that's just an experience. Because the day you got saved, you got rich. Yeah. Poor people ain't nothing but ignorant rich people. So you can't not, we cannot live off our experiences. Experiences don't mean nothing. I know some people, you know, when Satan brings a crisis to your life or some traumatic experience, a lot of people never move on from it. They had an accident on the highway in a truck. Every time they get in your truck, they'd be like, ah, you need some deliverance. Because those things will happen, but you need to seek the Lord till you deliver, till you ain't afraid no more. When I, when I first got married, well, when, when Dr. C and I got engaged, I went to somebody's birthday party or something. And the older women were looking at my ring and, baby, baby, girl, let me tell you something. Now, let me tell you now, it's going to be hard. Baby, it's going to be hard. And you're going to have to go through something. Uh, and watch out for that mother-in-law. And they, I mean, they just went there. By the time I left that party, I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Shoot, I had the best old mother-in-law ever, Mother Oliver. But see, they were going off of their experiences. And see, I told the Lord when I left that, I said, Lord, please, when I get older, don't let me be one of them old women like that. <laughs> Bitter, mean, sad, mad. That was my prayer. If an experience has you in its grips from your past, you need to pray till you are delivered from that experience so you can walk in the freedom that Jesus paid for. Come on, let br break yourself out. Let the Holy Ghost break you out of that prison of that experience. Some of y'all have had some bad friendships, bad relationships. Now everybody come to you, got your eye on them. Some of y'all have had some bad church experience. You come in this church looking. Uh, why they asking for my money? Uh, uh, uh. Just because you went to that toe up church don't mean this is a toe up church. I'm just saying. Now I admit, it's some rough churches out there. But how I many you know God always got somebody? He told the prophet, don't think I ain't got somebody. He said, Lord, it ain't nobody but me. He said, you a lie. He said, I always got somebody. I got 7,000. I got them hidden. Now, God keeps them hidden. And he keeps them hidden because it's only for those who desperately seek after the real thing they find it. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Ain't no good men. Yeah, they hiding from you. God hiding them till you get yourself together. Come on, straighten up, and they'll be revealed to you. Uh-oh. Get rid of your attitude. Start being kind. Start being sweet. Come on. Learn how to cook. Come on. Get out them jogging pants. Come on. I'm just saying. Get a job, men and women. Yes, women, I'm talking to you. Get a job. It ain't hard to find a man if you got some money. Shh. 
So God always has somebody. So we got to let go of our experiences. And now trust in his word over our experiences. Come on. Hallelujah. Another barrier is convenience. Hey, well, I need to work this faith thing. Man, I ain't got time for this. I'm working. I got a whole lot going on in my life. Just give me the medicine. I ain't got time for faith. Because that's going to take some work, some focus, some denying myself. I ain't got time for that. Just give me the medicine. Uh, I, ain't, I ain't got time. I know God said I could have me a big old house, but I ain't got time to be going through all that looking for no house. This apartment do me just fine for now. Whoa. You're doing God's kingdom a disservice because you are the light of the world. And God wants you to have that big house because somebody needs to see that he blesses people. And you're so lazy, you don't even want to go look for a house. It ain't that you don't believe you can have it, just, you just don't want to be inconvenienced by going through the, the faith challenge to get it. So you just stay where you are. It's just easy to get a, you know, a bungalow down in the basement somewhere. Oh, I know I can get it, yeah, but I, you know, I got other things on my mind. Convenience. How about this? Habits and cultural patterns. You are stuck. God wants to do a new thing with you, and you happy in the old. You want to stay in the old. Let's do it the way we always did it. It's so easy. Come on, let's just do what we used to do. But God wants to do something new. He want to do a new thing. He want to move you up in the leadership. You want to come and volunteer four hours every month. But he wants you to lead. That may mean you have to make change your whole life. Man of God. You know men, I'm going I'm to bless the men tonight. Men think because they work. Watch out now. They think because they work, they exempt from purpose. Let the little woman run the church. I work. But you were sent here for a purpose. And you're going to stand before God. I don't care how many years you worked in the mill. You're going to stand before God. And the community is in need of leaders. And ain't you tired of the women leading everything? Do you have to be bribed to volunteer to drive the bus? Do you have to be shamed to get you to volunteer for anything? I work. Here's what the women do. They work and lead. Uh-oh, look at them looking at me and looking at me like, well, what you talking about, Dr. J? I'm talking, I'm saying this to y'all because y'all got so much in you that we need. Come on. So much strength that we need. I know you're tired of carrying the bags. Dr. C, every time we get out the car, honey, will you carry my bag for me? Okay. But he did give you more muscles. <laughs> Why do you think God gave you them extra muscles? What? For what? <laughs> Come on, use them things. I don't have them. It's like Deborah under the tree. The man said, you going to go with me and war? She said, okay, I'll go. But they're going to say a woman won the war. Don't let it be said that a woman won the war for you when you should have won the war. Come on, God is giving you great leadership. King, you are king. You got so much potential in you. You could run cities, nations. Barack Obama ain't got nothing on you. Amen. 
Is your woman out of control? If you was a praying man, you'd understand the power of prayer. You wouldn't have to argue with your wife. I ain't going to do what you're saying. You ain't my daddy. Blah, blah, blah. You said, woman, I'm just going to pray. Oh, don't pray. Don't pray. I'll do what you say. I'll do what you say. All right, you better come on here then. That's how you ought to roll. Standing arguing with her, going back and forth in the flesh. You do what I say. I'm the king of this castle. Just start going, Hando Shanda Kalaba. Oh, Lord, okay. I won't spill the bill, bill, spend the bill money no more. Oh, Lord. I ain't having sex with you no more. Tell you, run things the way I want them run. All right. Hando Shanda Lokoba. She was like, honey, I don't know what just came over me. I just, baby, you look good to me tonight. I know I said I wouldn't, but all the power of prayer. If you starving, it's your fault. Habits, being stuck, refusing to lead, using the power you've been given, the faith you've been given. How about this? Barrier to faith. Focus on worldly things more than things of God. You are so involved in this world system that you are not focused on faith until the crisis hit. The problem is the crisis is going to hit everybody. Because Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. As long as we have an enemy, you're going to have some trouble. <clears throat> now, what you need to be doing is preparing, you know, just, I'm not saying preparing for trouble. I'm just saying be alert. <laughs> I'm saying have your faith built up. Be a focused individual. Focus on the Lord. <clears throat> not just on family and work. Not just focus on your lawn. Your grass so green, your sidewalk is orange. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You done fertilize it so much, the sidewalk done turn orange. But we can barely get you to come to church. Hear the word. Mark 14, 37. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. And Simon, he said... To Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. So we got to focus on spiritual things. We got to be in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Building yourself up in your most holy faith. Building yourself up so that when trouble comes, your faith is at a level to meet it. Come on. It's like family showing up, unexpected 20 of them, and all you got is some milk and some crackers. Come on, be prepared. If you heard they was coming, you go to the store. Pray without ceasing. Have your faith built up. Don't get so distracted that you don't attend to your faith. Come on, that's got to hold you. Because you never know when the enemy is going to jump out and go, ah! And you got to be so in tune, so in shape. You know, you're taking karate classes. So that when he jump out at you, you just go chop, chop. Come on, you just give him a couple of chops. Here's another thing that hinders your faith. You don't know your rights and your privileges. You don't know your inheritance. You got papers at home that you've never re read. Insurance policies, <laughs> warranties. You don't know what the warranty is on that stuff. You didn't read the instructions. When you got your equipment, you just push play 
on that DVD. That's the only thing you know. It can rewind and play. You don't know about setting a timer. You don't know nothing. You got your phone, and you know you got a couple of apps that you use. You don't have a clue all it, it can do. I have this saying, there's an app for everything. We were putting some up in the house, and I said, I bet it's a, I bet there's an app to level stuff. And sure enough, looked on the app store, downloaded a leveler, put the phone up, and leveled it. See, you got a lot at your hands, you just don't know. So I needed to know when we, when we did the, uh, Walk around the building, food for you, raise the money for food for you. Needed to know how many miles it was. I bet there's an app for that. So turn the app on, walk around the building, and tell you how many miles you walked. I need to drink some water. I need to drink a certain amount. I bet there's an app for that. There's a water drinking app. And it's saying, caution, you have not drank enough water today. And the Bible is much greater than the app store. <laughs> Come on. There's a whole lot more in there. When your kids start acting a fool, you should get in your Bible and say, I bet there's a Bible app for that. Yeah, it's called Beat the Butt. <laughs> Don't spare the rot. <laughs> Try that app. Trust me, it works. You got to know your rights. You got to know the day you got saved, you got rich. Do you really believe that? Y'all looking at me, do you really believe that? And you should be working on, and he said, in this life, I'm not talking about the life to come. He said, you will have treasures in heaven. When you get to heaven, you don't need them. You need them now. Come on. You have a right to good relationships, loving relationships, peace in your house. Your house is supposed to be like paradise, like Eden. It's not supposed to be hell. If it's hell in your house, there's an app for that. There's a Bible app for hell in house. It's called a family that prays together. <laughs> there's no scripture for that. But I guarantee if y'all get down and start praying, amen, demons going to start jumping out, coming out. We should start a new counseling ministry. It's called Counseling Through Prayer. Pastor, I got this problem. Me and my wife got this problem. No, you always doing this. No, you always doing this. No, you are. Both of y'all get down and pray. Hondo Shondo. Hour into it. Can we get up yet, Pastor? Y'all love each other yet? No. Let's keep praying. <laughs> keep praying. Three days later, you love each other? Yeah, we love. Yes. Yes, we love each other. Okay, you can get up now. <laughs> you have a right to it now. You don't have to wait. Luke 13 and 16, there was a woman who was crippled, and the church folks said, let her wait. Don't heal her on the Sabbath day. Then Jesus said, then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her today? Why should she wait? Look at your neighbor and say, why should you wait? Say, you should get your deliverance tonight. You don't have to wait. You can have it now. God wants you to have it now. Come on. Our faith should be so strong that overweight people come and they just drop three sizes. That's, who y'all, yeah, y'all like that anointing. I like that too. Uh, come on, pray, saints, pray. <laughs> If we ain't got to work for finance, see, see, I'm getting ready to go off here. 
if we don't have to work for finances, if God says he's already my provider, why I got to work to lose weight? Oh, I'm saying something radical right there. Okay, Mosquito, I command you to go. In the name of Jesus. Do y'all hear me? That's how strong the faith should be. It should be so strong that when people come in that don't even know they got demons, the demons will drop, just jump off of them. Come on. In the presence of the saints. Here's another one. I'm going to have to stop. Barriers to our faith. Fear based on carnal knowledge and expert opinion. When people give you a diagnosis that it is not a, of a non-treatable disease, the first thing that rises up is fear. Because you trust their expertise and their diagnosis more than you trust God's word. And he made you. And he made kidneys. And he made hearts. And he formed lungs and brains and every organ. So why should I believe an expert opinion over my God? Come on. Why should I take your carnal prophecy over my life? I'll prophesy over my own life and say, by his stripes, come on, I was here. Let me prophesy. Let me prophesy to you. If somebody has told you, you got to have headaches, the devil is a lie. You are set free by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. If somebody has prophesied and told you, you got to have arthritis, the devil is a lie. The blood of Jesus. They're not qualified to prophesy anyway. Talking about 50% of marriages end in, in divorce. The devil is a lie. When, when the synagogue ruler came to Jesus for his daughter, and they came to him, Jairus, Mark 5 and 35. And they said, don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter is dead. Jesus said, look, don't be afraid. Just believe. Ignoring what they said. He said, don't be afraid. Just believe. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't be afraid. Just believe. Amen. I'm going to give you one more. Emotional love is a barrier to your faith. I didn't say spiritual love. I said emotional love. It is possible that you can love a person so much that when they get attacked, your love gets in the way of your faith. Do y'all hear me? You so scared because you love them so much and you so afraid of losing them so much. I love them. I love them. If anything was to happen to them. That ain't faith. You ushering them on to death. It is hard when something happens to somebody you love to let go and let faith. To disconnect yourself. If I hadn't been a nurse, it would be much harder. I'm not saying it's always easy for me. I'm just saying nursing helped me. Because the first night I went on the floor, first night, of a new hospital. They say, oh, you the new nurse? Yes. Oh, we're going to just give you one patient. Really? <laughs> and I go in the room, the woman's dying. She just had surgery and she bleeding out. Oh, by the way, she's bleeding out. You got to call the doctor. Her vitals is dropping. So I call the doctor. He rushes in. He sees the drain is full of blood. He says, we're going to have to open up right here in the room to save a life. Raise the bed. Get the clamps. So he opens her up. And, I'm, and this is my first night now. And I'm standing there holding a woman's leg open while he tried to find the, blame to stop, the, the, the vein to stop the bleeding. Blood everywhere. And I got to stay calm. And I can't tremble. I'm holding it open for him, and I can't faint. 
Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on. Go to another floor. Oh, you the new nurse? Oh, we got one patient for you. Oh, by the way, he got AIDS. Oh, by the way, he's bleeding from every orifice. Oh, God, what am I going to do? Lord, what am I going to do? I got to go in here and be in this man's blood up to my elbows. This is not right, man. God, this is not right. He's a homosexual. Why should I have to die for him? Oh, I let those words come out of my mouth. Why should I have to die for him? Jesus said, excuse me? Didn't I die for you? And I hung my head, shaking and trembling, went into that room, bathed that man, hung the blood, everything, blood everywhere. And he was moaning in pain. And I said, just call on Jesus. And he said, Jesus, Jesus. And he died calling Jesus. But what if I hadn't went in there? What if I had refused? I'm saying sometimes you got to stay calm when you love them so much because your faith, the devil wants to attack your faith with your emotions. He wants you to love them too much that you don't want to risk having faith. He wants you to love them so much that you won't put God first. He wants you to love your child so much you won't spank them because you love them too much. You don't want to be mad at you. You don't want to be sad. I always find it funny that the courts say don't touch children, but when they get 16, 17, let us touch them with tasers and billy sticks and knee in their back and punch them in the face and kick them in the head. Don't you touch them. Let us beat them up for you when they get grown and it's too late. Anyone you love more than God is your God. I can't put my child in that Christian school. It's not good enough for my child. I'd rather they learn secular things and be in a beautiful, exquisite school. You love them more than you love God. You don't want them to get the word. You just want to get an environment. You want them in a lush environment. You don't want them to get the word. Anybody who is your God is in the hands of the enemy. Because he said, you shall not have no other gods before me. That means anybody that's a God is coming down. So don't love them more. You put them in danger when you love them more than God. Anything that will hinder your faith you need to stand against it. And you need to begin now to practice focusing on God, focusing on his word. Practice faith. Don't come to church and hear. You'd be amazed the people that come after church and act like they ain't heard a word. And I'm like, where were you? Are you in the room? Are you focused? Are you listening? Are you saying, I'm going to try that. I'm going to do that. Oh, Lord, I'm going to apply that. Are you just all up in the ceiling? Are you listening? Focus and mix it with faith when you come. Make a determination. I'm trying this. I'm doing this. I'm moving up in faith. They're not going to be up there just talking for, if nobody else in the church does it, I'm doing it. I'm going to be promoted in faith. Come on, let your faith grow and so that we can be a body that is so powerful we can take over a city and there won't be five shootings in one weekend. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to give you the opportunity to come and touch and agree and practice your faith now. There were many hands that I saw. You're dealing with some things in your body. And God wants you to be delivered. You have an inheritance, promise. That's why they call it the New Testament. The word testament means will. 
is his will, the new will. Read it. Riches, health, prosperity, peace, that's in the will. And that's Jesus' will. The good thing about Jesus, he died, but he got back up. So you got the will, and he's still alive. Come on, praise God. So we're going to uh, ask the ministry team, Dr. C.